As we continue to celebrate International Women's Month today, we host a psychiatrist and social entrepreneur in the U.S. and abroad. She has had international speaking appearances. She features on national television and radio and wields accolades in print and consumer guides to America's top psychiatrists. This Johns Hopkins trained mental wellness expert continues to solidify her mark as a medical doctor, motivational speaker, media personality, life strategist, and psychotherapist. Dr. Green is also the author of Breathing Room, Open Your Heart by Decluttering Your Home. Dr. Green joins us today direct from another television appearance with the television personality, Dr. Oz. Dr. Nova Green, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you so much. Okay, so now we're gonna have to deal with this mental health issue. Mm -hmm. First of all, I'd like you to explain to our viewers what mental health is. Well, you know, it's interesting. I think some of our language is a little bit off. So mm -hmm. when we look internationally, when we look specifically at mental health in the African community, mm -hmm. I really like to use different language. I like right. to look at it more holistically. Mm -hmm. Spiritual health, emotional mm -hmm. health, well-being. Um, it, because otherwise, we get lost. We get lost in really trying to in understand. Yes, right. you know, there are certain words that just don't translate, mm -hmm. um, and it makes it very difficult to express what's actually happening internally. Okay, so now just briefly describe your profession, the scope of your profession, how you practice. Well, I'm a Western-trained doctor. Mm -hmm. I've trained at Johns Hopkins, as I think you mentioned, right. and. Um, I went to medical school at Meharry Medical College, so I have a Western medical trained background. Right. But several years ago, I broke away from simply doing the traditional model that I've been educated in and really started tapping into um, my African traditions, some of the okay. things <clears throat> that I connected with when I was in medical school working with traditional healers. Right. So I then brought that back and begin intertwining that with my Western education to have a more holistic, um, ex yeah, a more holistic approach to seeing the individual, seeing the individual within the family and within the community. I always tell people that I took psychiatry from the couch to the community. That's very smart of you. Now, you mentioned Africa, and we know that you actually were in mm -hmm. Zambia, Dola, actually, mm -hmm. and uh, you worked with certain traditional healers there, yes. what they call ngangas yes. or sangomas, depending mm -hmm. on what language you decide to use. So having been to Africa and seen the role of the religion in the continent, how do you see the practice of psychiatry making a headway in, in, in the continent itself? That's a tough one because mm -hmm. it's really going to require an absolute paradigm shift. Right. It's going to require that we begin to have conversations about religion, right. spiritual practice, spiritual tradition, because a lot of the practices are misunderstood mm -hmm. and can often be deemed evil right. or inappropriate. Mm -hmm. And so it's difficult to tease out what is an emotional breakdown or mental disconnection from right. something that might actually be a spiritual affliction. So we have to, we're going to have to completely change how we talk about mental health, mental illness on the continent. Okay. So now also Christianity is in a mortal, you know, combat with traditional religion in Africa. And how does that help or hurt the practice? The practice no of... The practice of psychiatry and, and your <sighs> wow, you know, it's is. Are we talking within the continent or Africans living in America? That's a good analogy because sometimes, uh, in fact, if we have to go back, we realize that Africa has a history of colonialization. And Correct. Believe it or not, we look down on the practice mm -hmm. of traditional healing mm -hmm. because. It's associated with the dark spirits and, and all that. So we can choose whichever way, whether in the continent or in the diaspora. So how is the practice challenged? Because you have had that opportunity to go and practice, but were you trusted, were you you know, embraced right. to mix? Right. I was trusted. I was mm -hmm. absolutely embraced. Um, I was also challenged. 
Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is I believe that people work best within their own traditions. Right. So um, certain religious traditions that are introduced into certain communities can be more harmful right. than helpful uh, because people are trying to study something that's not innate. They're trying to study something that they are being instructed on right. as opposed to what they've been, what they've inherited traditionally. Mm -hmm. And that in and of itself can cause what we call cognitive dissonance. So a disconnection um, between belief systems. Right. And that in, a, that in and of itself is, um, it's been tragic in certain scenarios. Mm -hmm. um, that I've witnessed, particularly for Africans living within America, right. attempting to follow a particular practice, a Christian practice, for example. That's foreign to them. That's foreign to, to them. Background. That's yeah. foreign to them. On the other hand, um, say for example, people who are the fruits of the African diaspora, so people who are descendants of slaves, mm -hmm. they may have. Um, greater ease at introdu having introduced Christianity into their traditional African spiritual practices in a more hidden way. Right. So um, certain church experiences mm -hmm. are really a connection with ancestral spirits. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? Right. So they've been able to transform it. But when, when communities, when individuals aren't able to transform um, or to integrate their innate spiritual practice with Christianity or with other religions that they've been taught, right. that can be very, very difficult mentally. That can be very, very, that can be psychologically um, quite traumatic. Traumatic. Now, what will Africa lose if, say, the traditional healing practices are eradicated? You know, I believe the traditional healing practices are some of the richest resources mm -hmm. that Africa has. And what I'm really interested in is in helping to encourage people to explore and to not be so fearful mm -hmm. about um, what's true for them. Um, I think that in terms of healing, mm -hmm. uh, by integrating what is innate, what is in nature, what is in the cosmos, um, what, what has been known since the beginning of time, that has a greater chance of increasing wholeness and wellness. A much greater chance than taking an antidepressant. Right, right. A much greater chance <laughs> than taking an antidepressant. Mm -hmm. You know, like really being able to connect to whether it's dance, whether it's drumming, whether you know, whatever it is, um, really connecting to the spirit. So now when we go to, back to Africa, I'm sure this is something that you found out whilst you were there. Mental health is considered in so many different ways, like obviously connected to the spirits. Right. And uh, people are either ostracized from mm -hmm. society because they have that. In America or the Western world, they're, uh, they, they're put through institutions, you know, yeah. to take them. And there are different forms of mental health uh, problems mm -hmm. that you know, we could talk about bipolar, mm -hmm. depression, mm -hmm. uh, psychosis, or all those uh, kind of uh, situations. Now, what can you explain to us, or tell us actually, um, in terms of uh, the variations or differences of these kind of uh, illnesses? You know, there's a saying that if the only tool that you have is a hammer, mm -hmm. everything looks like a nail. <laughs> <laughs> so it really is about um, getting different kinds of tools to recognize that different people with different cultural backgrounds have different expressions of right. emotional illness mm -hmm. or psychological illness. And oftentimes um, people are institutionalized um, for conditions that could very easily be resolved with um, looking at vitamin D deficiency, for example. Right. Or in my experience, um, I worked with a lot of uh, students who were born in Africa mm -hmm. and were in college in the United States. 
And more often than not, they suffered from what would be clinically diagnosed here as seasonal affective disorder, mm -hmm. which is a condition in which um, when, the, when the days get shorter and there's much less sunlight, right. people get depression. And so it was something that I, I noticed because the, the, the daylight, the sunlight right. is very different in Africa That's than true. it is here, right. right? And so, but you know, without me being aware of that or connected to that or having that in mind, I could very have easily misdiagnosed, right, right, right? Um, um, that this was actually something that by being transplanted from an original, from their original place, situation, yeah, right. that that's what was going on, as opposed to oh, this is this, that, and the other, trying to put everything within Talking one about box. About being born in Africa and then experiencing this, what would you have? thought or what would your outlook have been if you were born in Africa? <laughs> oh, that's, oh, what would my outlook have been? I don't know. Right. What I can tell you, however, is um, having my first experience in Africa in my early 20s was life-changing. Mm -hmm. It really allowed me to connect with the essence of my being, the essence of my ancestry. Um, which completely shifted and shaped. Did, did you capture the spirit of your ancestors, do you think? Yes. And how, did, how was that experience? That was what really shifted me, mm -hmm. when it became real for me. You know, before, the, before traveling to Africa, before living in Africa, it was all an ideal. You know, yes, my you know ancestors were here, were brought to this country. They were slaves, and mm -hmm. um, et cetera, et cetera. That was the sort of the story. But go going to Africa and being there and realizing that um, there was so much greater and bigger history, um, mm -hmm. it allowed me to really connect to the truth. Okay. The truth to connect to nature, to connect to the cosmos which was a very different experience than being born here right. um, in the United States. Okay, so we're running out of time, but thank you for joining us. We're gonna talk about your book, The okay. Breathing Room, Open Your Heart by Decluttering Your Home. So I'm gonna read something that, was, that I saw mm -hmm. under the book. It says, bless your clutter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, you heard right, bless it. Bless it with everything in your life that is superfluous broken, burdensome, and overwhelming, because it is all here to teach you an important lesson. Perhaps the most important lesson there is, is what really matters. That's it. Okay. Can you explain about the book? The book is really about, here in the United States, I'm not mm -hmm. sure about in Africa, but here in the United States, we have clutter. Mm -hmm. And all of our physical clutter is an external manifestation of what's going on with us internally. Turmoil. So it's our it's emotional internal, yeah. turmoil, it's our resentments, it's our fears, it's our anxiety, it's our ideas about what we think is right or wrong, it's our belief systems. Mm -hmm. And in, in helping people to declutter their physical space, we are, we're able to actually open you up mentally, emotionally, right. psychologically. To be able to receive healing. And, and to be able to receive healing. But the difference, which is something that's very paradoxical to, to my approach and to the approach in our book, is it's about blessing and making peace with what is going on right here, right now, in this moment. These are spiritual lessons. And so we don't want to just get rid of the clutter. Right. We want to connect to the clutter. We want to connect to the emotional clutter and the physical clutter so that we can see what is it here to teach me? How is it here to transform my life? How is it here to connect me with my ancestry? How is it here to allow me to have love in my life and to have more open relationships and better communication when all of the junk is now out of the way? Okay, wonderful. Anyway, so if people want to get hands, their hands on the book, where can they check? Oh, it's, it it's going to be April 1st. It's going to be in all of the bookstores. And of course, they can always order it from Amazon.com. Okay. So folks, this was Dr. Melva Green, a psychiatrist, an entrepreneur, and also a motivational speaker. She has a resume that big. But uh, we're going to go away now. Stay tuned for more programming. This is Fungai Maboreke Sahara TV.